I'm Lois Garland. Of course you don't know me, and I have no right to ask you for help. But if you'll only let me talk to you for a few minutes. Come in. I know I should have waited and telephoned for an appointment. Why didn't you? I was afraid I wouldn't live until morning. That's just to remind me to go to bed at 3 o'clock. Let me take your hat and coat. Oh, thank you. Is tonight the first time that you've had the impulse to kill yourself? What makes you think that's what I'm afraid of? Well, you're not afraid of dying from a physical illness, or you'd have gone to a physician. If you feared an attack on your life, you'd have gone to the police. But when you come to a psychiatrist in the middle of the night with the explanation that to wait until morning would be fatal, self-destruction is the obvious conclusion. But I have no reason to kill myself. But you have the impulse. Does the impulse to kill yourself only come at night? Yes, after I've been asleep for a little while. The first time was two weeks ago. Do you have an emotional conflict? Any business or financial troubles? Uh, frustrated ambitions? No. Sit down, Miss Garland. Tell me about the nightmares that precede your awakening. Did I mention having nightmares? No, but tell me about them anyway. I dream that a woman comes through my window, dripping wet, as if she's just risen out of the sea. Is this woman anyone you've ever known? No. She looks like a woman from some other time. And she seems to be a part of the fog that drifts through the window. What does she do in your dream? She just crosses to the door, and as she leaves, she turns and beckons me to follow her. Didn't make any impression on me the first time, but when the dream kept coming back, night after night, I began to get the feeling that I wanted to follow her into the ocean. I think I'm going insane. Where do you live? At Rocky Point. I have a home overlooking the ocean. Oh, yes, yes, I know the place. It's very beautiful. But <laughs> a little lonely. Oh, not for me. My sister and other relatives live with me, and besides, I'm always having friends down for the weekend. You evidently enjoy having a lot of people around you. You know, from everything you've told me, you're not introspective or morbid. Your nightmares may be caused by some physical upset. I'm sure that with a little time... But there isn't any time. You don't realize how far this has gone. Tonight in my sleep, I must have gone down on the beach. Look. The other foot's just the same. I went to bed at 11 o'clock tonight. I woke up a little after 1 and my feet were like this. There was sand in the cuts. You remember going down to the beach? I don't know. I don't know what I dream or what actually happens anymore. Are you in any business or profession? Yes, I'm a commercial artist. I'm the designer for Shields and Hilton, the textile manufacturers. I want you to spend the rest of the night in the hotel. 
come to my office in the morning. Would it be asking too much to have you come down for the weekend? But I want you to move away from the ocean, at least for a while. Won't you please change your mind about coming down to Rocky Point? I'm sorry, but I don't think I could help you there. Can you be at my office at 10 in the morning? That's not what I want at all, Dr. Ordway. I want to know whether I'm dreaming this or whether it's real. I don't need you to tell me that I won't have these nightmares in a hotel. Dr. Ordway? Yes? I've been waiting for you. Drive on through and park in front of the house. Just leave your bags in the car. I'll take care of them. Thanks. Can I give you a lift up to the house? No, thanks. I can walk. I'm terribly glad you're here, Dr. Ordway. I hope I haven't kept you up too late. Had a little trouble finding the road. I'm sorry. Here, let me take your things. Thank you. I don't know what induced you to change your mind about coming here since I left you last night, but I'm more grateful than I could say over the phone. Everyone's gone to bed except my sister and my brother-in-law. Oh, then who opened the gate for me? Oh, that was Nick Callis. He's one of my... He's the cook. I see merits withdrawn from the cast of Narcissus. The illness, they say. Maybe they'll offer it to you. Do you think I'd even consider it now, after the way I was ignored? Adele, may I introduce Dr. Ordway? My sister, Adele Carter. My brother-in-law, Stanley Carter. How do you do? I'm very glad to have you with us, Doctor. It must have been chilly driving down. May I make you a little drink? I don't care for anything now, thank you. Well, perhaps you'll have one later. What is your field, Dr. Ordway? Are you a surgeon? No, I'm a psychiatrist. Oh, then we have something in common. The study of the human mind is a subject of absorbing interest to me. Oh, are, are you a student of psychology? One has to be in my profession. You see, I'm an actor. Don't encourage him, Dr. Ordway, or Stanley will talk theater to you all night. Well, that sounds like a gentle hint for me to go to bed. <laughs> well, I look forward to seeing you tomorrow, Doctor. Come along, Dale. Good night, Dr. Ordway. Good night. Do they know about your nightmares? I didn't want to send Adele into hysterics. I told them I met you socially and you're down for the weekend. You meet the others in the morning. I didn't want to encourage them waiting up because I thought it best not to make too much of your coming. Uh, did you go to a hotel after you left me last night? No, I came back here. It was nearly daybreak anyway. Was everyone here when you got back? I suppose so. Why? Someone followed you or preceded you to my place. That's impossible. Oh, no. Whoever it was broke open my dining room window. It must have been a burglar. Well, I'd prefer to believe that myself, but this man came in for one purpose, to hear what you told me, and I'm afraid he did. He came up the hall as far as the study door, and he stood there for some time. How do you know that? By the imprint his shoes left on the carpet. He'd come through that deluge and 
He was soaking wet. I'm sure nobody followed me. Shall I take Dr. Ordway's bag upstairs? If you please, Nick. Shall I show you your room now? Uh, yes, yes, if you will. What time do you route your guests out in the morning? Any time. We have buffet breakfast. Oh. Will you get your bag, Dr. Ordway? I want to change rooms with you tonight. Then you do think the room has something to do with your nightmares? I don't know, but if there is something odd about the room, you may sense it. Well, it's worth trying. Which is the one that your friend uses? That one. Nothing but a ghost could get in here. Oh, I wouldn't worry too much about it if I were you. That's probably some very simple explanation of your trouble. I hope you're right. Oh, don't, don't you need some of your things? I put them in the guest room earlier. Good night, Dr. Rodway. Good night. Hope you sleep better in this room than I have. Take it easy now. How'd you happen to fall? Sleepwalking. You chose a bad place for it. It's a good thing I happened along. The tide's coming in. You might have been trapped. I suppose you're another of Lois's guests. Uh, yes, I'm Dr. Ordway. Well, you're the first one I met under these circumstances. I'm Frank Swift. Lois is my niece. 
feel equal to climbing up to the house? I think so, yeah. My room's down here. I don't sleep very well, and they say my walking around disturbs them. Why, are you troubled with nightmares? Nightmares? I haven't had one since I was a boy. Anything I can get you? No, thanks. Good night. Good night. your clothes. Your friend paid me a visit. I found myself down on the beach. Then it has something to do with the room. I'm not going insane. Did I say you were? You implied it. But I can't be insane. Unless... Unless what? Nothing. What was it you wanted to show me? A man's been murdered in the hall. I want you to tell me who he is. was right here and... Are you sure he was dead? Of course he was dead. He wasn't breathing, he had no pulse, and his skull was fractured. What are you looking for? Shouldn't there be some blood on the floor? Not necessarily. I didn't say he committed harakiri. I'm sorry. Look here, do you think I imagined I saw a body here in the hall? No, but do you remember exactly when you woke up? I mean, are you sure it was before you saw the body? Do you think I'm out of my mind? No. But that was the strangest part about my nightmares. I never knew where the dreams ended or the reality began. Sleep well? Splendidly. Did you? Me? I always sleep good. Exercise does it. Nothing like a morning swim to keep you in the pink. Why don't you try one? I may at that. Oh, I better get up to the house. I gotta cook breakfast. Oh, you're also the cook. Yeah. I used to have a lunchroom downtown, but it folded, so Miss Garland told me I could stay here and help her while I looked for another spot. Oh, I see. Are you having any luck finding one? I ain't even trying. I like it here. See Dr. Ordway? Yeah, he just went down the beach. Nick. Huh? Did anybody follow me when I went into town night before last? No, I'm sure nobody followed you. And you're sure you didn't tell anybody I left? You ought to know me better than that. All right, Nick.
You know who he is? He's Raymond Shields, the senior partner of the firm I work for. But you told me last night that he was in town. I thought he was. You better run up the house and call the police. The police? Why? It must have been an accident. That's for the coroner to say. Here you go, Doc. We better all eat a hearty breakfast. It's going to be the last good meal for one of us. I've eaten jail grub, and I know. Wait a minute, Nick. Did I forget something, Mr. Gordon? Yes, your place, for one thing. What are you insinuating about Mr. Shields? He's dead, ain't he? Mr. Shields left here yesterday morning to attend to some business in town. He said he wouldn't be back until late today, but apparently he changed his plans and came back late last night. This is proved by the fact that his car is parked just outside the gate. One presumes he didn't want to disturb anyone, and so attempted to walk the rest of the way to the house. In the darkness, he became confused. Remember, he was a very nearsighted man, and accidentally fell over the cliff. I think he was pushed. I had a strange dream last night. Hmm. I dreamt I saw a murdered body in the hall upstairs. He'd been killed by a blow on the head with some heavy object. Felt his pulse, examined his breathing and all that. It was amazingly realistic. They always are, while you're dreaming them. Well, the peculiar thing is, the man was Raymond Shields. Yet I'd never seen him before. It's strange that you should be the one to find him on the beach. Well, I don't think so. You see, I was looking for him. You don't seem to have much of an appetite, Mr. Hilton. I don't see how any of you can eat after such a tragedy. You see, Shields was Hilton's partner. They were just like father and son. I was devoted to Mr. Shields. He took me in as a boy and eventually made me his partner. Doctor, did you tell the sheriff and the coroner about your dream? Yes. What did they say? They said I was nuts. <laughs> the sheriff wants to see you, Dr. Ordway. Thank you. Did you or your wife hear a car drive up in the night? No. With people coming and going at all hours, I never pay any attention to noises. Uh, if you're through with us, we ought to get back to work. Oh, yes, go ahead. Oh, Dr. Rodway, the formal inquest is at 10 in the morning. You'll have to be there, of course. Yeah, well, that's the usual penalty for discovering a body. It won't take long. Maybe we can have a little talk on psychology after. Before I was appointed coroner, I thought of branching out into mental cases myself. Yes, there are so many minds that need help. Uh, I suppose you're going to ask for a verdict of accidental death. Well, what would you ask for? I told you Shields was killed in the house. I saw his body in the hall. That was when you were coming home from your sleepwalking tour. You saw Shields' wristwatch. You think he could have fallen from the cliff to those rocks without breaking the crystal? You know, I once picked up a guy who had gone through a windshield without even breaking his glasses. I tell you, I saw Shields lying dead in the house. Dr. Ordway, you're a psychiatrist, and dreams make you a business. But I've got to deal in realities. I'll see you at the inquest. If I were you, doctor, I wouldn't mention my dream at the inquest. You know, the mind plays curious tricks on us at times.
Are you sleepwalking again, Dr. Ordway? No, oh, no, it's a little early for that. Say, this is quite a laboratory you have here. How did you get in? Through the door, of course. I locked it when I left this afternoon. Well, that's strange. It was open when I came by. I've always been interested in chemistry, and I, I couldn't resist dropping in. Did you find what you were looking for? Well, I found out that you are doing some extraordinary research in industrial chemistry. Also, that you are working along uh, revolutionary lines toward the development of a new fabric. You do know something about chemistry. Oh, a little. And I'll show you what I'm after when I'm close to it. Feel it. It's a new synthetic fabric developed from a raw material which is as cheap and plentiful as... as weeds. Well, it should make you rich in times like these. Well, not for me. I developed this for Lois. It's all for her. Formula, patents, everything. She's a textile designer, and my invention will... further her career. I should say it will. Oh, did you... Talk to Shields about this before he died? Shields was an old fool. When I mentioned it to him, he said I'd better stick to patent medicine. Well, every explorer in science has had to face the ridicule of the ignorant. Yes. That was very awkward of me. I apologize. You'd better go up to the house, Dr. Aldway. And don't come here again. You might accidentally play with something that isn't so harmless. Good night, Mr. Swift. She'll not meet you now. There's trouble. I've got to warn her to stay away. You do as I say and go up to the house or you'll find yourself in an institution. You wouldn't dare. Get along with you now. Oh, Lois. Where have you been? No place. Sit down for a minute. beginning to get the feeling that you've been trying to avoid me all day. Well, it wasn't because I wanted to, but... I was afraid of what people might think if we showed much interest in each other today. Well, have you told anyone that Shields wanted to marry you? No. Well, then there's nothing to worry about. After all, no one expects you to be overwhelmed with grief because your employer died. But I do feel badly. So do I. Only I can't help but realize that Shields' accident removes the only obstacle to our marriage. Darling, you don't have to be quite so blunt. Oh, I don't mean to be. But when he suddenly sprung that idea of wanting to marry you, well, my feeling for him changed. But you didn't ever think I'd take him seriously. No, but men of his age aren't good losers. He'd have fired you, and if we'd gotten married, he'd have kicked me out. I'd rather have had it that way. I'm sorry. I, I thought this was Mr. Gordon's room. He's in the room opposite Lois. Oh, I thought this was his. <laughs> I didn't know that you had a child. I haven't. That's my husband's boy. I'm his second mistake. I'm sorry. Don't pay any attention to me. I've had a headache that's lasted a week. Is there anything I can do? No, thanks. Good night. Come in. 
Oh, hello, Doctor. Come on in. I'll be through in a couple of minutes. I see you're a night shaver. <laughs> no, not regularly. But I'm in court tomorrow, and I'll have to leave here early. Oh, then you'll not be at the inquest. No, that's your show. You found the body. And it was most injudicious of you. Finding bodies leads to unexpected difficulties. As a lawyer, let me advise you to leave them to the other fellow. You're a friend of Lois, and I'm her attorney. I'm going to risk another piece of advice. Don't mention that you think you saw Shields in the hall. If you do, you'll have to talk about your sleepwalking, and you'll sound decidedly ridiculous. Perhaps you're right. I'm sure of it. It's too incredible a story. How could the body be removed from the hall in the minute or two that you were talking to Lois? I don't know. I certainly don't know how it could have been done without you hearing it. That doesn't mean anything. I sleep like a rock. <laughs> the roof could fall on my bed without me hearing it. What do you know about Lois's affairs? Has she any money outside of her salary? Not a dime. Although she makes a very good income as a textile designer. This free hotel she runs for her relatives and friends bleeds her white. I've been trying for a year to try to get her to break this up. Is uh, Stanley Carter a well-known actor? Not exactly. Marriage interrupted his career. His first wife is the daughter of Roger Collingsworth, the steel man. The family didn't like the theater. I see. I really dropped in just to ask your advice about the inquest. Just tell everything exactly as it happened, but forget your nightmare. Well, thanks a lot, Gordon. Not at all, Doctor, not at all. Good night. Good night.
and me are going to talk, Doc. Yes, I guess we are. Shove off. Get away from that door. You don't have to wave that gun. I'd rather be a good little boy than a dead little boy. Sit down, Nick. Now what, Doc? You and me are going to talk. Suits me. What did you find down below, Doc? I found a nice, easy way to carry a man out to the beach. A murdered man? Yes. If there's any news to you. Does what you found pin it on anybody in particular? Not exactly, no, but you said this morning you'd eaten jail grub. Should be pretty easy to make you fit. <laughs> oh, Doc, you're scaring me. You're husky enough to have brain shields, chucked his body down the laundry chute and carried it down to the beach. Yes, you're even husky enough to have broken the window fastening in my dining room. Don't be sore about that window, Doc. I'll pay for it. That's mighty fine of you. What were you doing at my house? Well, I heard Lois running out to the garage that night. Everybody had been asleep for hours, so I knew something was wrong. I caught up with her just as she was back in her car out of the garage. She wouldn't admit she was in trouble, but she asked me how to get to your address. So you drove her there? Oh, no. She's been acting like she was in trouble, so when she streaks out like that in the middle of the night, I figure somebody's been putting a bite on her and that they called up to say, pay now or else. Her acting worried and all that made me smell blackmail. Yeah, you probably have a nose for it. Well, anyway, I took off and beat her to your address. I was all set to bump you off. I appreciate that. And I still am if you don't lay off. We gotta let Shields go as an accident. You mind telling me why? Lois will take the ride if you prove he was murdered. Lois? That's why you gotta forget whatever you tumble to tonight. Do you know how many people get knocked off every year? Oh, roughly 7,500. Then what difference does one more or less make? What made you change your mind, Nick? Change my mind? Mm hmm This morning you were convinced Shields was murdered. And now you're willing to pass it off as an accident. Well... Oh, it's Dr. Ordway. We thought we heard someone talking down here. I lost something down the laundry chute. I've just been making some coffee, Doctor. Would you like a cup? No, thanks. It might keep me awake. Is there anything else I can get you, Jess? No, thanks. Well, then I'll see you in the morning. Good night. I'll go up with you. Good night. Good night. Cup of coffee, Nick? Don't mind if I do. Did Dr. Ordway find what he was looking for? Yeah. I think he did. How did you happen to befriend a man like Nick? Oh, I don't know. I guess I felt sorry for him. He'd been in prison, you know. Yes, I know. What was he in for? He killed a man in the kitchen of his restaurant. Oh, it was an accident. He had some silly argument with a man who was making a delivery. So Nick killed him. How? Well, Nick had a knife in his hand, and when this man hit him over the head with a bottle, Nick stabbed him without thinking. Oh, I see. He's just absent-minded. He only got a year for it. When he was released, he felt kind of lost, so I invited him to come out here and cook for me. Till we could set him up in a restaurant. I understand. Nick's all right. He'd do anything for me. And he thinks a lot of you. That's the impression I got when I met him in the... Do you recognize this? It looks like the candlestick from the table in the hall. It is. It's been gone from there 24 hours and nobody missed it. I suppose you get so used to having ornaments around that you never actually see them. Are you teaching me psychology? If you're wondering who broke it, I can tell you Shields did with the back of his head. How can you be so callous? <laughs> well, no one seems much concerned over Shields. But that's not true. We were all very fond of him. Yes, you're all very fond of him. But you'd all prefer to have his death called uh, an accident rather than murder. Certainly everyone believes it was an accident. How could it have been murder? Shields was killed with this brass candlestick, which I just found in the cellar. Couldn't you possibly be wrong? Couldn't someone have dropped the candlestick and hid it in the cellar in order to avoid admitting damaging it? I'm afraid not. What are you going to do with it? 
I think I'll spring it as a surprise at the inquest. I know how wrong I am to ask this, but can't you... Won't you forget about the candlestick? Nothing can help Shields now, and nothing can injure him. Who do you want to save? Jess Hilton. If it were proven that it was murder, it would only be a matter of time before it was disclosed that Mr. Shields left his share of the partnership to Jess. And then he'd be arrested. But whoever killed Shields was undoubtedly staging your nightmares. How does Hilton fit in with that? The police don't care about my nightmares one way or the other. All they care about is a motive for murder. Well, it seems strange that everyone is so unselfishly anxious to save somebody else. Nick wanted to hush up the murder to protect you, which incidentally would have protected him. Now you want me to forget about the whole thing to protect Hilton, which incidentally clears you. I'm sorry I ever asked you for help. I'm beginning to feel the same way. Broadway. Better get drunk and come out here. Riggs has been killed. Wake up, Gordon. Wake up. Come on, come on, get up. A little early in the dark. There's been another murder. Riggs was killed a while ago in my room. Well, I didn't hear anything. Are you sure it was murder? Yes. Go down and tell Swift to come up here, will you? Well, shall I phone the sheriff? Oh, I've called him already. Dr. Ordway, I can't wake up my wife. I'll be with you in a minute.
Did you tell anyone about the candlestick? Of course not. Why do you ask? Riggs was killed in my room, and the candlestick's gone. Did I hear you say that Riggs was killed? How does it happen you're fully dressed, Nick? Didn't you go to bed tonight? Oh, well, Mrs. Riggs woke me up and asked me to find her husband. Dr. Ordway. Will you please look at Mrs. Carter? I still can't waken her. Will you give Nick my car keys? They're on my dresser. Tell him to get my emergency bag out of the car. What is it, Doctor? I don't know yet. I wonder why he came to Doc's room. Go down to Dr. Ordway's car and bring his emergency bag. Is everything all right? Yes, of course. Hurry, Nick. What's the matter with Adele? There's nothing to worry about. She'll be all right in a few minutes. I think it would be best if you wait in another room. Besides, someone should watch Riggs' body. Are you afraid it will fly down to the beach? I don't see anything funny in Riggs' murder. He was a decent, hard-working fellow, and I, for one, was very fond of him. I remember you said the same thing about your partner. Death seems to touch you deeply. Perhaps I'm not so indifferent to death as you are. I haven't committed 15 murders. Well, I suppose you're wondering how Uncle Frank got away with 15 murders. It isn't any ordinary feat. Stanley. A few years ago, my uncle made a mistake in a formula, and before it was discovered, a large quantity of medicine was shipped and sold. Yes, I... I remember the case. 30 or 40 people were made ill, and a number died. 15 of them. I don't think I ever read the outcome of the case. Nor did anybody else. It was stale news by then. Lawsuits bankrupted the company, and Anki ducked the trouble by going balmy. My uncle had a nervous breakdown, but he's been much better since coming here. Now he's doing research and experimental work. He's on the verge of something that will revolutionize industry and amaze the world. And what are you on the verge of, Stanley? You know it's impossible for an actor to get work except in New York. Then be a little bit more considerate of Uncle Frank. You'll find yourself on the way there. If this ham's annoying, you'd be a pleasure to salt him down. Will everyone except Lois please get out of this room? And you'd better keep in each other's sight. Remember, one of you is a murderer. Well, what about you, Dr. Ordway? You have an uncanny knack for turning up bodies. I apologize. One of us is a murderer. The sheriff is here, Doctor. Good evening. Uh, uh, good morning, Doctor. What have I got here? This is Mrs. Carter. How do you do, Mrs. Carter? She's been drugged. You'd better give her a subcutaneous injection. Come with me, Sheriff. Your sister, ain't it? She's pretty, too. Now, who'd be giving a nice girl like her a Mickey? Is this his room? No, it's mine. You kill him? No, I found him like that when I woke up. You found him? And you found Shields. Well, you didn't have to go far to find this one. Where's the weapon? The murderer took it. But I believe it was a candlestick that was used to kill Shields. I'd hidden it under the cushion of this chair, but it's gone now. Candlestick, huh? Come on, Doc, tell me exactly what happened in here. How come you didn't hear anything? I don't know. But I have a vague memory of trying to get up out of bed, and I don't even know why. Any dreams last night, Doc? Not exactly. But I think I was under the influence of hypnotic gas. Hypnotic gas? <laughs> well, you learn something new every day in my business. If you have an open mind. Open or shut, you still learn plenty. Well, there it is, Sheriff. Make what you can of it. Yeah. Have uh, you any idea how this ties in with Shields? Both killed with a candlestick. Riggs, I think, because he was coming in to tell me something. Shields, he probably ran into whoever was manipulating my nightmare and had to be silenced. But how was Shields' body removed in the minute or two that you were talking to Miss Garland? It was thrown down the laundry chute. <laughs> Come on, let me show you. How is she? She's awake, but she doesn't remember a thing after getting into bed. You better come with us, Doc. What's that for? Laundry. 
What do they think of next? No, it's not big enough. Not big enough for what? Shields' body. I don't agree with you. What do you think of the dimensions of the chute? Oh, it's not more than 10 by 20 inches. Well, Shields wasn't a big man. Distance through his chest to the back was no more than 9 inches. What do you think, Doc? Hmm? Uh, yeah. Where does that door lead to? That's Gordon's room. If I remember correctly, Gordon was very anxious to have Shields' death called an accident. That's right. But so were you. Get me out of here! Well, you were right. Are you hurt? I don't think so. Say, what makes you so sure that the body was dropped down here? Why couldn't the murderer have carried it down the stairs and then out to the beach? He didn't have time. I checked all the bedrooms in the house. Everyone was accounted for. But how did the body get from here to the beach? He must have come down here later and carried it through the cellar. Cellar? Yes. If you go through that door to the other end, you'll find a covered door. It leads to a flight of steps that go down to the beach. You sure? You can't miss it. Uh, if you don't mind, I'd like to get some clothes on. It's a little cold down here. All right, go ahead. And tell the others to get dressed. I want to talk to them. All right. Am I keeping the sheriff waiting? No, he's still busy down below. What are you looking at? You're the only one I mentioned finding a candlestick to, and you didn't tell anyone. Yet somebody knew I had it. That's the only way we could have been overheard. I suppose the air conditioning pipes run through the attic and not the walls. I don't know. It was in the house when I moved in, and I never used it. I'd like to take a look in the attic. There's a trap door in the linen closet. I'll show you. No, I'll find it. You wait here and see if you can hear me when I talk through the outlet. Right. Dr. Ordway. Dr. Ordway. All right, Lois. Can you hear me, Lois? Yes. What on earth happened to you? I just got lost for a minute. I found something up here. What? Wait there a minute. has Gordon been a friend of yours? Well, he's really Stanley's friend, not mine. Gordon represented him when he was being divorced. What is he doing for him now? Nothing. He comes down for long weekends. Come in. Hello, Doctor. Oh, Lloyd. 
I found something that belongs to you. Do you remember where you left it? Yes, in a wastebasket. Whose wastebasket? What's the matter, Doctor? You sound like the district attorney. Oh, purely unintentional. But if you'd rather talk to the district attorney, I'll turn this over to the sheriff. Well, it was in the wastebasket in Carter's room. The letter in it referred to some legal business I'm handling for him. I gave him the letter and he tossed the envelope away before reading it. Does the legal business concern Stanley's son? I'm not privileged to discuss the affairs of my client. What are you and Stanley up to, Fred? I think he's trying to recover the custody of Stanley's son from his wealthy mother. You wouldn't dare. Why not? Stanley's the boy's father. It's a legitimate suit. But if a wealthy grandfather offers 50 or 100,000 before the case goes to court, I imagine your client will be willing to withdraw the suit. I told Stanley I'd never permit him to sue for custody of the child. You fancy yourself the grand lady of the manor, don't you, Lois? But your hospitality and generosity is nothing but a means to enjoy the selfish satisfaction you get out of running other people's lives. But this is once you won't have your own way. If you and Stanley go to court, I'll testify that he's morally unfit for the custody of any child. I'm afraid you'll have to be more specific than that to injure Stanley's case. I will be. When he was on the committee of a charity drive, he stole $4,000. I made it good for him. Did you tell Carter you'd expose him in court if he sued for the boy? Of course I did. This places me in a very awkward situation. I'd never have accepted Carter's case if I'd known all the circumstances. If you told me this before, Lois, I wouldn't have so regrettably misjudged your character. Well, I'm glad we appreciate each other now. I can't understand Lois's attitude. Women are sometimes rather difficult to understand. Go downstairs and see if you can find the sheriff. I'll be in Carter's room. A man wouldn't come into a home as a guest and then pull a murder like this. No, it'd be imposing on hospitality, wouldn't it? What I mean is he'd have to have help from the inside, else he wouldn't know about those steps leading to the cave and all that sort of thing. Help from whom? Well, Riggs, for one. He got scared and he was about... What was that? I don't know. It sounded over there. This looks like Dr. Ordway's nightmare. The candlestick. The murderer must be right over our heads. Did anyone come down these stairs a few minutes ago? Well, only Miss Garland, but I sent her back up. What happened? Well, this just came down to shoot. Did you see anybody leave the bathroom? No. Gordon. Gordon! What's the matter? Were you in the bathroom a few minutes ago? No. Well, then who was? I don't know. I lay down for a little snooze. You know how I sleep. Oh. Oh, Sheriff, hmm. are you ready to question us yet? Where have you been for the past 15 minutes? I was in Mr. Hilton's room. We were together, weren't we? Why, yes. Well, what about Carter? Where's his room? He's not in it. I thought he was downstairs. Oh, what gave you that idea? Well, he isn't up here. Uh-huh. Where's the phone? Right there. did it, Carter? I don't know. I went into the bathroom and somebody hit me before I could turn the light on. The next thing I knew, I was in here. Well, that seems to clear everyone on this floor. Yes, it would seem so.
lights. Thank you very much, coroner. You know, I feel awfully silly in this outfit. Now, do you see how it was worked? I do not. You might wake up and seeing a thing like that get a nasty shock. But why not scream your head off or grab hold of it? Yes, why follow it? Well, I didn't want to knock anybody out or I'd have demonstrated this hypnotic gas at the same time. You'll never convince me that a gas could make anyone go sleepwalking. No, nor me either. <coughs> Uh, doctor, don't please do it. That's it. That's it. <coughs> Sheriff, stand perfectly still now and watch the car. Ah, uh, you. You better sit down and rest a minute. You see, uh, a moving figure attracts anyone under the influence of the gas. That's why the coroner followed me. It's a very interesting demonstration, but what you've proven doesn't point to anyone. Here you are, Doc. Thanks, Nick. Anything else I can do? Not unless you'd like to show them the rope trick that I taught you. Oh, it'd be a pleasure. Are we going to spend the rest of the night looking at this bad vaudeville? Maybe you'll find this act more interesting. Do you mind, Sheriff? No, not at all. We've got all night. What are you all looking at me for? That only proves that it's possible for a man to tie himself up. He doesn't prove anything against me. You're right, Carter. But I found the key inside the closet, under some linen. That's why I had Nick get these slacks from your bedroom. You'll notice that the knees are stained with pitch, just, just like mine are. You see, it's practically impossible to reach the air conditioning outlet in Lois's bedroom without kneeling in pitch. But what could I possibly gain by putting on that wig and mask and scaring Lewis? The repetition of those nightmares would have induced a mental disorder that would have caused Lois to be declared legally incompetent to testify against you in court. All right, Carter, come on. Get it, Jack! you into all this. I don't know where we'd have been if you hadn't. Well, I'm only sorry to lose a patient so quickly. Uh, let me take your bags, Doc. I'll put them in the car. Thanks, Nick. It's been a perfectly swell weekend. I hope you come again. Oh, Dr. Roadway, will you come in here a minute, please? Oh, yes, of course. I can't wake him up, Doc. <laughs> no, no, Doc. It's no use. You'll never convince me that gas will work. Let's get on with the investigation. <laughs> <laughs> Watching the movie channel Weekend Multiplex. Here's the schedule of movies that are showing today. At 11.30 a.m., 10.30 Central, just before dawn. At 12.35 p.m., 11.35 a.m. Central, Uncommon Valor. The package plays at 2.30, 1.30 Central. At 4.30, 3.30 Central, Limit Up. And at 6, 5 Central, Crocodile Dundee. That's today's movie schedule. Thanks for watching the movie channel Weekend Multiplex. I came to America in 1914. How many times do we...